You know, if you're going to be in private practice, one of the things you absolutely have to have is a good website. It is your front door and it is your face. It's what people go to first to find out about you and the services that you offer. And I would highly recommend that you check out the folks over at Brighter Vision to help you with that. Brighter Vision is the premier web design and branding uh, company for therapists. Uh, They'll not only help you build a beautiful custom website that represents who you are, but they provide unlimited support and also help with search engine optimization, SEO. And that's what you have to have in order to be found on the, on the internet. So go check them out today. Go over to practiceoftherapy.com slash brighter vision and use the coupon code Gordon and you can get your first month free. So check them out today, practiceoftherapy.com slash brighter vision. This is the Practice of Therapy podcast with Gordon Brewer, helping you to navigate your private practice journey. This is session number 72 of the Practice of Therapy podcast. Hello, folks. I'm Gordon Brewer, and I'm so glad you've joined me for the Practice of Therapy podcast. If this is your first time listening, welcome. If you have been a long time listener, and hopefully you are, um, welcome back. And I'm glad you're here with me today. So uh, this is going to be a fun episode. And I've uh, been looking forward to this uh, interview that I'm doing with my guest today, Jeff Simons. from He's from Bath, England, and he is over in the UK. And we're going to talk some more about the resources that he has. And also um, just some of the differences between um, practices in the United States as compared to the UK. So we'll get to that here in a moment. But one of the things I wanted to uh, put out there for you guys is just making sure that you know about the Money Matters course uh, that is available now. It's still We're still in the pre-launch, and it's only going to be that way for a few more weeks. And uh, the Money Matters and Private Practice course is all about helping you learn the financial side of private practice. It's one of those things that we didn't really learn too much about. Most of us didn't learn anyway in our clinical training. Probably if you're like me, you had no training in the financial side of being in private practice or just being in business, period. So in this course, I walk you through all of that and we talk about all the things that you need to know in order to make your uh, private practice financially sustainable and sound. So go check that out. You can get, see that over at practiceoftherapy.com slash finance course. And um, during this pre-launch, you can still get it for half price. And so in order to get it at half price, be sure and use the coupon code TAKE50. That's just T-A-K-E-5-0. And that will let you have the course at half price. So uh, check that out. Um Let's see. I'm trying to think of some other things that are coming up. Um, I don't have, uh, uh, unfortunately, I didn't put any, I didn't make any notes for this intro, but um, one of the things I know that we've got coming up in October, and I'm really getting more and more stoked about this, is Killing It Camp. And that is going to be something I'm doing uh, in conjunction with a lot of other private practice therapists. Joe Sanok over at Practice of the Practice is putting this great event together. It's going to be really kind of uh, the ultimate private practice conference. There's going to be hundreds of other therapists there, uh, and it's going to be out in Estes Park, Colorado in October. Beautiful time to be there. I'm looking forward to that as much as anything, just being out there. Uh, And it's going to be held at the YMCA of the Rockies. But if you'll go online and check that out over at killingitcamp.com, 
you can find out more about that. And I'm going to be there as one of the speakers, along with several of the other people that have been here on the podcast. So uh, go check that out. Um, it's going to be an exciting conference. And so uh, hope hopefully you can join us out there. Also, um, just speaking of resources, and this is one of the reasons I'm excited about my uh, my guest today. There are just so many resources out there uh, about private practice now and the business side of private practice. That's why I started the practice of therapy was to provide people with uh, reliable resources and good information just to help you in your private practice. And um, my guest, Jess Simons, has a company called Private Practice Hub, and it's a UK-based, United Kingdom, England-based uh, company, and he's doing very much the same thing that um, that I'm trying to do here with the practice of therapy. Uh, he's been doing it maybe a little longer than I have, and he's got a beautiful website and beautiful resources. Um, some of them are translate well into uh, those of us that are in practice in the United States. Some of them maybe not so much, but for the most part, it's great information and I'm going to commend it to you. So, but anyway, in my interview today, as I mentioned, Jeff and I are going to talk about some of the differences between practice in the United States and, and England and just, uh, you know, things that we think about. And the truth of the matter is we're more alike than we are different. Um, and that's true for all of the people in the world, I would say. Um, so, uh, but anyway, uh, without further ado, here is my friend, Jeff Simons. Hello, folks, and welcome again to the Practice of Therapy podcast. And I'm so thrilled to have with me today Jeff Simons. Um, and I am saying your your last name correctly, aren't I, Jeff? That's absolutely fine. Okay, Jeff. Jeff is one of my new friends that I've met online. And Jeff, if you can't tell, he sounds a little different, and so he's from the UK, but. Jeff is doing some great stuff and is a valuable resource for the folks in the UK. And Jeff is the founder of the Private Practice Hub and has worked as a consultant with Thriving Psychotherapy Practice for over five years. And one of his interests is in helping private practitioners to run and grow their businesses for more effective to be more effective. So he developed the Private Practice Hub, which is a free resource for private practitioners in the UK primarily, and which supports and helps therapists run a successful private practice. And um, Jeff, so I'm so glad you're with me. Tell folks a little more about yourself and just how you have landed where you've landed in this whole private practice realm. Thank you, Gordon. Thanks very much indeed um, for the opportunity to have a chat. Um, certainly, uh, my background, I should mention straight away, I'm not a therapist. Mm -hmm. uh, my background is sales and marketing, particularly around software and leading edge technology solutions. Uh, mm -hmm. My wife is a therapist, and we actually do have a therapy practice based in Bath, Southwest England, mm -hmm. and we're uh, currently running 20 associates from that. So my wife, who has been in private practice since 2003, um, actually has given up her face-to-face -face work as at the end of last year, 31st of December. Mm -hmm. She hung up her, uh, her coat on that one. But we're still running the therapy practice, which means to say people can still get um, uh, contact with her and she will place that person with a suitable therapist mm -hmm. and maintain that relationship with the therapist to make sure that that person is seen and uh, gets the the help that they need. Um, we saw some four or five years ago due to mainly legal governmental uh, situations, i.e. they were putting money into training 
of therapists, mm -hmm. but at the same time, our NHS, National Health Service, uh, was being starved of money and depleted and therefore losing staff. So mm -hmm. we saw that wasn't going to work. So all these people that were trained, where are they going to go to? There is no place for them in the NHS. They would have to go out to private practice. And frankly, um, there was no help or support for these people. And so we started building a website that would help them from the very first time that they get their accreditations um, and certificates on the wall. They would then be able to start running a practice, whether it be from their home or in a therapy room, they would have the basis to understand the sorts of things that they would need to do to be able to get clients and get success. Because frankly, most people, therapists, concentrated on the therapy side, but during that therapy um, situation, they were never told how to run a business. They were right. never given marketing. I have found out subsequently that if you're a massagist, you do get a half day on marketing at the end of your course. Okay. But that's about it, mm -hmm. um, which is not enough really to give you the tools to be able to run a successful practice. And so four years ago, we started this, been building it up. And about two years ago, we started looking at ways to um, get remuneration. So we actually get remuneration through advertisers wanting to talk to our audience okay. rather than the therapist paying for this service. Oh, wow. That's, yeah. a, I so like that's how we actually make it work. Mm -hmm. um, we are about to launch a new website in the next uh, month or so, um, which will give people, the op therapist, the opportunity to buy an annual membership for £10 for the whole year, right. so not, not particularly expensive, but that uh -huh. gives them more in-depth information, more in-depth knowledge, right. but, that, but that just supports the work that we're doing here. Right. And right. we've been reasonably successful. We have over 40,000 therapists that we communicate with in the UK, mm -hmm. covering 121 different therapy categories. Oh, wow, wow. Yeah, that's a, I love that. I love that uh, that business model, and that's um, yeah, it gives me some food food for thought um, just around um, providing resources for people and doing it in a way that um, it r really helps therapists out. So, yeah. So what's interesting is it sounds like the training that people receive in the UK is really geared more towards like public mental health. Um, kind kind of that setting versus a a private setting, um, it, it very much like it is here in the U.S. Mm. I'd never yeah. thought about it that way before, Gordon. Yeah, that's a that's a, is an interesting point. Um, uh -huh. you, you're possibly right there in a lot of the therapy. Bear in mind, say I talked to 121 different therapy categories, so mm -hmm. I'm not sure that every category would be considered that. Um, right. If you're an acupuncturist, reflexologist, you know, so there are certain categories that possibly yes, would yes. be so, looking towards yeah, the private so, sector rather than just uh, public well-being. Right, right. Yeah. So, so really what you're doing is really across several different disciplines um, in terms of just providing information uh, maybe specific to those different niches. Yeah. The interesting thing is I would argue that whether you're a complementary therapist, a talking therapist, a physical therapist, or a you know, holistic therapist, running a business, and that's what we're talking about here, right. is exactly the same. Yes, yes. And it right. starts off with writing a marketing plan or a business plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so many therapists don't do that. Yes. And one of the resources that we have on our website um, if you become a member and it's free of charge to become a member, um, if you go into our resource section, you'll see in the spreadsheet category, there's a, a, a what if calculator, mm -hmm. very simple page, yeah. no more, take you about yeah. half an hour, but it gives you a good thought, a good way to think about how to set up your business from mm -hmm. you know, all the costs involved, which most therapists starting in business perhaps haven't considered. 
yes not just yes. tax but there are lots of other costs that are associated including Correct. your training including your accreditations renewal every year but it's all been accounted for in that spreadsheet and then mm. at the end of it you can say well if i charge 10 pounds this is how much I'm going to earn. If I charge £100, this is how much I'm going to earn. Mm -hmm. So it gives you a, a way of trying to find out what sorts of money you should be charging. Right. The reason I mention that is because one of the questions that I get over and over and over and over again is the question of how much should I charge? Yes, yes. And I, I find that's very true here. And um, and I like that concept because uh, it's something that I I try to teach as well is that essentially you're working backwards um, from, you know, this is what I need to maintain my uh, my standard of living. And there's a figure there and you work backwards from that and you have to take it. You're exactly right. You have to take into consideration all of your overhead or your costs um, with that and and know that in order to be successful and like you uh, like you alluded to is that I think most therapists most people in this these fields um, really haven't learned that we're we're taught taught very well how to be good clinicians uh, but we really have not learned the business side of things and so yeah and and that quite frankly that's one of the things that you and I connected about is that we're teaching a lot of the same same kinds of skills and things through what we're doing so oh, absolutely i mean uh, it is quite interesting that um so many therapists go into therapy first and then start to learn how to run a business there are more and more people that are coming in from business and retraining as therapists. Right. And they obviously have a much better grasp of the business, my wife being one of them. Mm -hmm. um, she certainly, um, she, she was in business first in finance. It's yes. totally different from therapy. Yes. Um, and I mentioned to you earlier in our little discussion that she actually trained at the university uh, in New York. Uh -huh. so she, so I do have a great empathy with uh, with you guys over there. Yes, yes. <laughs> you yeah. taught her all she knows. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> oh, wow. For folks in the UK, um, what is the process that they go through, uh, for example, to become licensed? And then if they wanted to start a private practice, um, other than obviously learning about the business side of things, what are the other things that are typically required there? I know one of the, I'll just kind of pause here a minute and just say one of the things uh, for those of you listening uh, that Jeff and I talked about is just, I find it just fascinating maybe the differences between therapy practices in the United States as compared to the UK. And there's a lot of, a lot of similarities I know, but uh, just really interested in those differences. So, uh, well, one of the key my, differences yeah. I would suggest is the fact that you've got um, states over there with different laws. Yes, yes. We don't have that issue in the UK. The mm -hmm. law is the law, England and Wales, full stop. Yes, it's different in Scotland, but uh -huh. uh, primarily um, I'm talking about England and Wales. Um, uh -huh. Obviously, my focus in my website is purely UK. But mm -hmm. I've had quite a lot of interest from Canada and America recently. Yes. Um, yes. So that, that's another issue altogether right. um, uh, yeah i've been asked if i could license my platform out to these various countries but uh, yeah. something that to be considered for the future um mm -hmm. but uh, the simple answer is that um, once you've got your accreditations it's not a license it's an accreditation mm -hmm. so I, i've got my piece of paper that says i'm a clinical psychologist or yeah. yeah. Um, and I'm now associated with uh, one of the associations, BABCP being one of them. Um, I pay my money. I can now practice as a therapist, mm -hmm. okay. providing one of the rules would be that I have to have uh, insurance. Okay. Yeah. So you yeah. do need to get insurance. And if one goes onto my website, I think I've got about three different insurance companies on the website that will offer um, special arrangements for my members. So right. that's one of the benefits of becoming yeah. a member of so Private that, Practice Hub is yeah. you get the special offers. 
So that's like liability insurance, uh, malpractice Absolutely. insurance, that sort of thing. Absolutely, yeah. yes. Yeah. And it's interesting how it ranges in terms of price between one company and another. Yeah. And I won't bore you with the rationale or the reasoning behind that, but yeah. uh, leave that for the individual therapist to look at that themselves. Uh -huh. um, but certainly, you know, uh, the organizations over here um, – they're going to go through difficulty. And I promised myself I wouldn't mention Brexit. <laughs> okay. Oh. But I've got to mention it because there will be differences when uh -huh. Brexit happens, mm -hmm. should that ever happen. Um, mm -hmm. And we won't go there with all yeah. that's going on in Parliament at the moment. Uh -huh. uh, um, but uh, yeah, th there are issues there for the insurance companies in terms of their registrations and how they're actually going to keep their registrations up as insurance yeah. companies and being outside in Ireland and places like that. to they have to uh, get their own uh, limited companies in Ireland from one right. particular company I'm working with. Wow. Yeah, that, that does sound complicated. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. but it's not really for the therapist to worry about at this yeah. stage. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah. yeah, I just didn't realize that Brexit would have an impact on my website. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've been, I've been following that a little bit. Um, I've not completely got my head around it, but it's just, uh, it's almost like you're cutting ties. Um <laughs> cutting ties in a way that maybe is not going to be helpful for everyone. I think uh, interesting that you're having trouble getting your head around it. I, I think that there's probably one or two MPs that are having their problems getting yes. their head around it. <laughs> right. And I think we should stop at this point. And yeah. Move on. yeah. 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 I think, I think your right. audience will get very bored if we start. Yes. 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 So, um, yeah. So one of the, um, I guess one of the differences is uh, really the licensing is, um, you know, obviously pretty radically different. I know as you and I were chatting about before we started recording, you know, technically here in the United States, if you are, um, you know, I'm, I'm in Tennessee, but if I wanted to see someone in California, maybe via telehealth, and that's, that's one of the things that's, uh, drastically change the way we do things. Um, I just think uh, you know, across the globe, really. Uh, but if I wanted to see someone in California, technically I'm supposed to be licensed in California if that's where the client is. Um, that seems to be the general rule. What is it? I guess uh, in the UK, it's uh, it, it's more where you're where the therapist is rather than the client. That's the general rule. I mean, we have as part of Private Practice Hub a subset called the Online Therapy Hub. Mm -hmm. And we have various contributors there, such as uh, Philippa Wheats, Carol Francis Smith, uh, Kate Dunn, who write about online therapy. And they're suggesting that wherever they sit is where the legal... Um, the legal sit. So they're sitting in England, even if they're talking to someone in France, uh, as Pippa does regularly, um, because she lives in France as well as lives in England half the time, uh -huh. um, then England prevails okay. in any kind of legal issue. No, to my knowledge, no one has been called up on this. So until there's a legal case that proves it one way or the other, that's the modus operandi that one is taking to. Right. So providing you put this on your website in England, that that's where the, the rules are, then you should be covered. Yes. Yes. Yeah. But and I, what, keep checking back on my website, particularly. Yeah. After the online yeah well, that's, I guess that's a, that's a good segue there because I, I want people to know about your website. Um, Jeff, tell us a little bit about the resources you have there. And, um, maybe a quick walkthrough of what can be found on the website. And, and of course we'll have in the show notes here links to everything so that people can easily access that. Okay. No problem at all. Well, private practice has been around for four years and we've built up a huge amount of information, but we've done it on the basis of there. I use this term, the five pillars of private practice 
which are finance, marketing, administration, human resources, and professional issues. Mm -hmm. um, and so literally, if one goes into marketing, you'll see everything there is to know for the therapist in, uh, the, under marketing. So mm -hmm. be it branding, be it marketing materials, it's all there for someone to read. Um, and you can keep clicking through to the various, there's lots of hyperlinks there. Um, mm -hmm. The free resources uh, section is, as it says, lots of free resources, lots of downloads. Um, and uh, the, one of the biggest issues we have is we have so much information that sometimes people have difficulty finding everything. All right. But, but we, have a, we have a new website coming very shortly and you'll like this, um, we have built a chatbot. Oh, wow. An artificial yeah. intelligent chatbot mm -hmm. that we'll be putting on our new website. I'm still training it. Um, mm -hmm. It's not behaving particularly well at the moment. I've had to put it in the corner. Um, but we, <laughs> but we are, it takes a lot to trade. What, what you have to do is tell it all the resources, where they are, et cetera, et cetera, and for him to understand. So literally... Um, it will sit on the right hand side of our page and you'll be able to input there a question and the chatbot should point you in the right direction and right. be able to respond. Now where I'm going with that and, um, is the fact this will be the first chatbot built by artificial intelligence. But what I'm planning to do is build one that will sit on a therapist's website. Mm -hmm. Now that has a lot of implications because you have got uh, ethical issues and you have to be very clear that it is an automatic uh, intelligent device, but it's not human. Yes. Yes. Um, and, you know, if someone's not well, seriously not well and needs help now, you need to tell that person that. So, right. the art so there's all sorts of things around it. I am on a committee from ACTO, um, which is an online association uh, that talks about and um, works out all the, these ethical issues. Yes. yes. Um, but it is exciting because what I'm doing is piloting with 10 uh, therapy, uh, uh, therapists at the moment where we're literally hammering the artificial intelligence, giving it lots of information. So when someone comes onto their site, it will be able to be intelligent hopefully, mm -hmm. and, and be able to help that individual. Mainly, uh, where I saw this being an advantage was saving of time. I know my wife will spend at least 40 minutes, 45 minutes on an initial call trying to find out what this person wants, needs, how she can help them, even if it's never going to go anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, if this person has got a buddy or it's not the right fit for us or is too far away, she will still spend that time to make sure that person is put on the right course. My view is that if we could put an artificial intelligence agent to help that individual initially, at least that might save a lot of time for the therapist. Right. But I think we're early days. As I said, my background was leading, selling software, selling leading edge technology solutions. Mm -hmm. I think I'm way ahead of the curve on this one. Yeah. I haven't seen many uh, chatbots, artificial intelligence led on any therapist website yet right uh, but uh, i'm quite excited about that as you can probably tell yes yes well it's it, that is it's very um you know I, I as you were talking about it i was just imagining yeah that's one of the things that is a big uh takes up a lot of time for people uh in in private practice or just in any sort of therapy practice is doing that initial intake or just answering questions that people that are uh, just inquiring are are asking, and so I could see where that would be a huge time saving and probably eventually a money savings because I, I know as we grow and scale in private practice, one of the things that we 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 figure out very quickly is that the we need to spend therapists need to spend less time doing the intakes and communicating with people and taking phone calls and, and all of that and spending more time in the therapy room. And so uh, kind of the go-to would be to hire an assistant 
uh, to do all of that for us. But if you could do it through artificial intelligence, that would, uh, of course, it might cut somebody out of a job. But I mean, it's uh, still it's a cost savings from a from a business standpoint. And I think as time goes on, there'll be even more benefits to the individual that needs help now, because if you're in the therapy room, you can't be answering your telephone. Uh, Yeah. And that's where I see it is the ability to be able to deal with people that need help now, rather than wait for when you can see, speak to someone when you're out of the therapy room. Right, right. Yeah. So uh, I'm curious. One thing I'm curious about is it sounds like um, telehealth or using uh, video conferencing has really taken taken off maybe in the UK more so than here. And I might be wrong about that. But what uh, what are you what trends are you noticing there? Well, certainly more and more people are offering either video or text. Yeah, or even email, uh, but not so much email, but certainly text and video is definitely on the increase. Um, more and more therapists are getting trained. I say uh, we've seen that, and certainly Pippa Wheats runs a training school, and there are, uh, yeah, very keen uh, to get people properly trained because it is a different process mm-hmm. dealing with online therapy as compared with face to face. Yes. For instance, at the moment, you're probably looking at me, but you can't see my eyes because I'm not looking at the screen. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I can be doing all sorts of things at this end that you've got no control of where you have in the therapy room. Cor- correct. You correct. can see my body language far easier face-to-face than you can on using video conferencing. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, that, that's exactly right. Well, so the, Plus the, the main, fact that the yeah. band, you're reliant on the bandwidth. Yes. Whereas when, when video conferencing first started with you, uh, the guys in the States, PictureTel, I think mm-hmm. they were one of the first people to get involved in video conferencing. They used um, something called ISDN, which was or, um, much faster, if you like, or better bandwidth and, and fixed bandwidth. So it was a lot easier to control. Now we're using Wi-Fi and we're using broadband and that sort of thing. It's not as straightforward. Yes, yes. I don't want to get too technical. But yeah, that- yeah, well, that's a, yeah, and those are things you have to really absolutely take into consideration for anyone that wants to start doing telehealth. Um, it's, um, yeah, it's, um, it, it creates You're some... totally problems. reliant on technology, Gordon. Yes. And that, yes. for some therapists, that's quite a challenge. Yes, yes, it can be intimidating for some people. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So one, one of the things uh, too, uh, just in related to that, um, you know, a big part of what we do, and especially the business side of all of this is uh, getting paid for what we do. So it, I, I'm assuming um, in England that um, most therapists are able to receive um uh, payment from the national health system. Is that a correct assumption or do most people tend to be more private pay? Um, I only deal with people that are in private practice, uh-huh. except the fact that some of these folk will be in the national health service as well. Okay. Okay. They will may get referrals from the NHS, but they will be private referrals. Okay. So if they have a, um, an association with their local GP practice, general practitioner practice, that you know, if someone comes to them and that person can afford therapy, they might say, well, why don't you go and see Joan or see Fred? Yes, yes. But uh, the... The, um, the reason for that, Gordon, mm-hmm. is that the NHS, unless you're seriously ill, there's long time delays to get treated. Mm-hmm. Yes, if you're really seriously ill, you'll get treated straight away. If you're less seriously ill, you will have to wait for that therapy. And some people won't, you know, have got money, will say, well, I'm not going to wait. I want to see someone now. Right, right. So it's, a t- it's in that sense, of course, uh, one of the big, um, I guess, bones of contention here in the U.S. is just the, the privatization of uh, Healthcare, health, 
health insurance in particular. It's the way our system is designed, the way we do it. And I, I think there is a lot. And in, in Canada, it's a national health system. It sounds like uh, in, the, in England, it's a national health system. And so you don't have all of those different, uh, oh gosh, it's a mess. <laughs> all those yeah, different. We still moves. have health insurers. Yeah. We still, I mean, often uh, so, uh, our therapy practice will, will have people that we have to invoice the health insurance company. Okay. Okay. And they have so many sessions uh, that are paid for out of an individual's health insurance. Uh-huh. Um, would, would that be like a private health insurance yes. in addition to yes. what, uh, what they... Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. And we, we do very well from that. Okay. Um, and uh, an individual can either have their own personal private health or it could be a company health scheme. Okay. Okay. I got you. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah, that's, that's fascinating to me. So, well, Jeff, I want to be respectful of your time and, um, so Jeff, tell folks how they can get in touch with you and your, your website address and just maybe any parting thoughts you might have about folks listening and about private practice and all of that. Okay. Thank you for the opportunity, Gordon, again. I really appreciate it. It's been lovely yeah. talking to you. And the, despite our te- yeah, despite our technical difficulties. <laughs> Yes, I've been in technology a long period of time, and it's usually something very straightforward and simple, but I couldn't see it at the time. (laughs) So apologies about that. No problem. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) um, Yeah, privatepracticehub.co.uk is our main website where all the information is contained. Uh, At the top right-hand side, you'll see, or your listeners will see, that there is a Become a Member more than happy to invite any of your audience to become members. There is at this stage no charge to become a member. And by awesome. doing that, they gain more information or access to all of our documents and all of the downloads, which people tell me are pretty, pretty good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Saves a lot of that hunting around for that yeah. uh, document that you're looking for. Yes. Uh, like therapeutic executor, one that uh, someone was asking for. Uh, the other day and that's one of the reasons why I'm in our next website that we're putting a chat bot on there so people can help navigate the system a little bit easier because we do have thousands of pages and it does sometimes become uh, a little bit difficult to find everything that you want even if you use the site search Um, but yeah privatepracticehub.co.uk we also have a directory of therapists website but again that's UK focused so possibly not relevant to your audience our latest development which may be interesting to your audience is that we're developing a new website called practitionermarketinghub.co.uk or .com i believe um, which will give all the opportunity to have lots of marketing products for from various authorized uh, resellers of mine that will sell their products in a very easy way. We're trying to get them to produce their information in a non-technical format, so English-speaking only, so people can understand a lot clearer what they're getting. So it could be just basic as a website development. It could be help with trying to get you in the top end, top of uh, Google, whatever it happens to be in terms of marketing, even you know, your writing your content in a very easy way for people to be able to, to find you. Right, right. Wow, Jeff, that's uh, some great resources, and I intend to, to join after I get off of here um, so that uh, I can tap into those resources as well. And I, I, I'm hope, hopefully, as we have had uh, conversations about uh, earlier, um, hoping to do some more collaboration and and uh, keep people abreast of what's going on for you guys. That would be fantastic. And what would be interesting is any comment on chatbots. Yes. From your audience, yes. negative or positive. You know, right. what, how do they think that that could possibly help their website, if at yes. all, 
or is it a negative and they wouldn't put it on their website and the reasons why so mm. yeah i'm just in that process of that early research and early work so any feedback on that would be really terrific okay great Great. Well, Jeff, thanks again for being on the podcast. I'm so excited for people to get to know you and get to learn about uh, the private practice hub over in, across the pond, as we like to say. Um, <laughs> so it's great, great chatting with you today. Talking to you. And if someone wants to write to me personally, it's Jeff, G-E-O-F-F dot Simons, S-I-M-O-N ns at privatepracticehub.co.uk happy to see this right and we'll have that in the show notes as well so lovely ha have a good rest of your day well i'm so glad you got to know jeff simons and his humor and his charm um, it's, uh, it was great having that conversation with him on this episode. And I do apologize for that. You probably noticed maybe some, um, a few little technical glitches in there. We were finishing up the, the podcast and realized that I couldn't, I couldn't hear him and he couldn't hear me. And, uh, we tried several different things and then it was just something as simple as a, a cable that was unplugged. So we got that taken care of. So if you notice a little bit of, uh, a skip in there, a little bit of a few little technical glitches. That's what it was. So bear with us. But as I told Jeff, I said, I'm not so much interested in the quality of, of the audio as much as I am the quality of the content. Uh, but uh, one of the things you've probably figured out about me is I don't where I, I don't really sweat the small stuff too much. I'm, I'm terrible for making typos and I'm terrible for uh, just making little mistakes along the way, but uh, that's being human and I like being human. So uh, anyway, well, folks, thanks again for joining us on this episode. Do check out today's sponsor, Brighter Vision, and you can check them out over at practiceoftherapy.com slash Brighter Vision and use the coupon code Gordon, G-O-R-D-O-N, and you can get your first month free if you use that service. They're, they do make beautiful websites, and so check them out today. Um, also, if you, I'll commend to you again the Money Matters and Private Practice course that is out there during the, this pre-launch launch phase. And again, you can use the coupon code TAKE50, T-A-K-E-5-0. And uh, during this pre-launch, which is only going to be a few more weeks here, um, you can get it at half price. So go check that out as well. So, and then Kelling at Camp, again, a little, one little more plug for that. Uh, that's going to be a great conference out in, in Colorado in October. And so I just want to make sure you have that on your radar screen. And they're, they're doing an early bird uh, registration right now. So you can get a bit of a discount by doing that. And also I found out that right now flights to Denver are really cheap. And that's uh, uh, another reason to go ahead and commit to that and get in that early. So, well, that's it for today, folks. And thanks again for joining me. Um, do reach out to me. I love getting emails and you can reach me at Gordon at practice of therapy.com. Love getting your questions and love hearing from you. And, um, Check out the resources on uh, Jeff's website and also the practice of therapy. Uh, Jeff's website is uh, uh, privatepracticehub.co.uk. And then this website, practice, uh, practice of therapy, is just simply practiceoftherapy.com. So check us out. Take care, folks. Have a good rest of your week or weekend whenever you might be listening to this. So long. been listening to the practice of therapy podcast with gordon brewer please visit us at practiceoftherapy.com for more information resources and tools to help you in starting building and growing your private practice and if you haven't done so already please sign up to receive the free private practice startup guide at practiceoftherapy.com 
The information in this podcast is intended to be accurate and authoritative concerning the subject matter covered. It is given with the understanding that neither the hosts, guests, or producers are rendering legal, accounting, or clinical advice. If you need a professional, you should find the right person for that.